Welcome to Borderlands. Wait, Dreamscape. Uh, last time our heroes made it out of the woods, so they are they're out they're out of the woods now. Um, they went and spoke to Franz Voigt, and Voigt, you know, he paid them for their heads that they, you know, scalped and all that. Uh, at least the ones that from the Chimera. But he said when the gang asked him for a golden ticket, they said he said. No, it's not. It's not worth it. Uh, however, if you manage to convince uh, Hawkman to sell his land to me, then which he would never do otherwise, I'll give you a golden ticket. Well, the gang said their goodbyes, drank a few more glasses of wine, and went over to Billy Hawkman's. And Hawkman also bought the heads and paid them for their work that they did in his forest. And uh, he said that he would give them a golden ticket. Uh, if they sabotaged Franz Voigt's winery. Uh, and he said that he would also sell his land to Franz Voigt if they destroyed his winery first. So the gang now has two potential uh, ticketers, uh, which that leads them to where they're currently at, the bazaar. Uh, Point of note, gearing up. we still have the uh, goat head because we are delivering that to Bradshaw. That's right. Voight asked them to deliver the goat head to Bradshaw. Yep. Uh, Voight apparently is attempting to repay some sort of kindness Bradshaw did for him. Uh, we surmised it must be a, a lover thing. Uh, <laughs> it's the only possible conclusion you could come to. Uh, but one thing we were doing, I believe when we left off, was we were stopping to see if Dwarfadil needed supplies for his uh, his mission. And has it sabotaging. actually been decided that only Dwarfadil is going? Right, it could that be. That is it. true. Do, does anybody want to come with Dwarfadil? Yeah, I'll go. Um, I feel like uh, well, maybe Aya was going to do something. I think she, she said oh, she had so, some sort of plan. So Rachel did tell me she has that token thing and the gaze of two minds thing, which let her see and talk telepathically to someone. And she was going to give it to Dwarfadil so that she could relay messages to Dwarfadil. That like token of the hex blood thing that she has. I believe Dragul has it at the moment. Okay. Um, oh, let me go didn't the uh, the hag's eye give you that ability as well? Like you could see through the hag's eye. That might have been also what she was referring to, but I think she was referring mostly to the remote viewing part of her uh, eerie token ability. I see. Um, Let's see, we don't have a hag's eye sheet at this point, do we? I think oh, I yeah, we do. It's right, right. Where is it? Is it a, under handout? I don't see it. Yeah, I don't think I made it. But I'm pretty sure that's what the hag's eye did. <laughs> if I remember correctly. It, uh, huh. it allowed you to share vision. Well, uh, Vendrick probably isn't going to go with Dwarfadil because he's going to have to more than likely distract the people on top. Yeah, we'll go while... with Dwarfadil. Well, if Ul's going, then that means other people can go, right? I think are both you, Ul and Dwarfadil have like stone shape or something. They have options for yeah. hiding. So whoever's got options yeah. for hiding might be might be a worthwhile companion. Yeah, I also have to I'll probably have to polymorph Ul so that we can fly on in. Ul can fly. He is an owl. Yeah. A giant conspicuous owl. He can fly. He has invisibility. 
He has Melt into Stone. He has Shadow of uh, Mole. He has um, Wall of uh, Stone Shape. I mean, Ul can hop in his lantern. I think. And when Dwarfadil wild shapes, it'll just become part of Dwarfadil's yeah. body for a little while. Well, I think the idea is that you're supposed to look like an indigenous screeching owl or something like that. Yes. Right? <laughs> All right. Ul, well, you're that's, gonna have to that's get the naked. only. That's the only animal that Dwarfadil knows how to wild shape into. The screeching owl. Yeah, his uh, his master seats us the uh, breeding habits of. Southern Screeching Owls. It's a good thing I don't realize I'm an owl. <laughs> um. All right, well, so then I guess this, this, is a Ool, a this is a Ool and Dwarfendel mission. We're, our job, I guess, is to just, like, provide a distraction or... At least yeah, just we'll, uh, moral support we'll, to uh, to paint we'll undead down. rights <laughs> on the walls. Yeah, we're supposed to paint we'll undead rights on the winery. Is we'll we'll go in and we'll party down and we'll party down so hard that uh you know it will be a distracting nuisance, but not hard enough that we will be ejected. Yes, a moderate amount of soul. As they and say. as per Dwarfadil's request, we do have to write Undead Rights, I think, on the front door. Oh, God, yes. that's right. We got it. Or the we front gate, it. I believe, is what Dwarfadil asked. Or you could write any of the slogans, Don't Make the Dead More Undead. Okay. Or, or, uh, can request you... a list can of, you of different phrases. Can you make the dead more undead? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Keep defiling their corpse, bringing them back, and then file it again. Once a human, always a person. That's, uh, huh. always that's a solid one. choice. That is a good one. So, we are here. In the marketplace. Why are we here in the marketplace? Uh, we needed, if Dwarfadil needed supplies, and then technically we needed to know where Bradshaw's place was, which I believe I found out last session. Yeah, it's like right next to the prison, I think up it's on like a north cliff of us. or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what does Dwarfadil need? And I guess wool. Yeah, game. I don't. We got plenty of gold. Let's see, we've got. Uh... Did he get, did did he get paint got... last time? Oh, he was gonna get paint. I remember that. Yeah, we've I gotta got get some a... paint for you guys. Apothecary, an alchemy shop, magic, and weapons, and of course some food. We can look at John's magic shop and the apothecary in case there's something in any of those that are. I uh... don't think I shared this with you last time. Uh... Darla. Ah, there's the other Potion of heroism. Potion of maximum shrinkage. <laughs> heroism <laughs> potions are. I was in the pool! Heroism potions are always nice to have. <laughs> A potion of human vitality. <laughs> God, okay. It actually works negatively on orcs. <laughs> I'm curious, I'll bite. Uh... Yeah, what's this potion of maximum shrinkage? Well, I guess you're going to Darla's alchemy shop. Then. All right, yeah, Dorfidel's gonna head to Darla's first before he heads to uh, Agatha's apothecary. <laughs> okay, Darla looks at you and you come in, and she goes, "Well, hello. It's been a okay, while man. since anybody's been in here." Uh, 
I, I'm going a little crazy. I haven't seen I haven't seen any customers. You know. Are, are, is Zul coming with? Uh yeah. Well, Ul's we'll, we'll just following Dorfordell. And uh, so uh, yeah, so you're. Yeah. Oh, two! Oh, you brought your pet owl. Lovely. Ul starts uh, raising the lantern. <laughs> Nah, man. Pets are like ownership, and like I don't believe in like ownership of like another living creature. He's oh. like he's, my buddy. He's your friend, then. Your friend. Yeah. Lantern starts lowering down. Who follows you around? Very good. Very good. Well, take a look around. I mean, you can see all the wares that I have, but if there's something special, I might be able to whip it up. Bananas? I I don't have bananas, no. That might be at a stall out there. He said he might be able to whip it up. <laughs> well, I can't whip up a banana. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Garfordo, we might have to get some more bananas from the stalls outside. Yeah, man, we can buy you some bananas in a minute. No, no, they're for tonight. Oh, yeah, we can get a bunch of bananas then, man. What, yeah, what, yeah. what are you all up to tonight? Well, see, oh. instead of like those spiky things he put out when he goes steal stuff, you just put out a banana and they trip and they scream and alert you when you're stealing stuff. You're, you're going to steal stuff? She grabs some of her beakers and clutches them. No, 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 no. This is all. No, man, we're not going to steal anything. We were just going to like. Pull a prank on some friends, man. Oh, yeah, that's why we're getting bananas because it's non-lethal. Yeah, well, man. Well, then, if that's the case, uh, hmm, if you're gonna prank somebody, let me see. Let me see. What do I have here? I have a. Uh, whoop! I have a. I have a perfume of bewitching. Maybe uh, you might want some of that. What's uh, a perfume? Got a, a potion of climbing. Uh, potion of maximum shrinkage. Ooh. That's a good prank. That's a good what, prank. What, what's that do, man? Hmm. Hmm. Hang on. Let me read the label real fast. Uh, <laughs> I closed the it looks like a nervous. vial of syrup. And uh, when you drink this potion, you gain the reduce effect of the enlarge reduce spell for 1d4 hours. That's not maximum shrinkage, man. I, well, I guess it's just shrinkage. Depending on how, you know. Can you make it so, like, we can just slather it on something and then it would take effect? What do you want to slather it on? I like a if I might ask, I just want to. Yeah, ask. like you know, you like you put a bucket of water on top of a door, and then it falls in the purse, and like ah, they're splash. Instead, hmm. it's a maximum potion of shrinkage, and they shrink, and it's like ha ha ha, type of deal. Oh, yeah, I could, I could probably whip that up. It'd cost a little more, but you know. How much money we got to offer, Dill? I got none. Uh, let me check, man. Dorfadil. Out of game, I think you guys have a shitload of gold. Uh, uh, Dorfadil has... Dollars. Not much. <laughs> not much. <laughs> I think you got at least, like... I think you guys got something like 2,000 gold or whatever from the... Was that per person? No, no, no. I, I don't know how like, you guys split it up, if at all. I feel like Dwarfadil would want paper money because it's more sustainable than ripping a bunch of minerals out of the earth and making coins out of them. Nah, man, the trees are more important than the rocks, man. And the leaves. That's not how paper money works, man. They, like, chop down trees and, like, displace the owls, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I then they... Old. Then they use that evil paper to like write orders to kill undead, man. Yeah, we can't have that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh Dorfadil will happily spend some of the party's money. 
Yeah, let's we'll, we'll step into the party's coffers. Yeah. That's whatever he needs, man. <laughs> on definitely like the shrinkage <laughs> potion, at okay. least. And, uh, and and she takes it because she heard you say, uh, you know, you, you sort of wanted a, a, to be a balm of maximum shrinkage. And uh, she she goes to her little uh, her you know her small cauldron over here and takes a like a, a, a little thumb a little eye dropper and uh, drops a, a mysterious drop in it and uh, it it thickens the whole liquid up. And she comes back to you and and hands it. She says, "There, this will shrink whatever you rub it on. Be careful." All right, I'm gonna hand that to Ool. Ool just put it into the lamp. All right, she she holds her out her hand and goes, <clears throat> "That'll be two hundred gold, please." Yep, I just hand it to her. All right. What are you doing, Ool? Nothing. I just did it as a joke. <laughs> but okay. it was a nat twenty. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and then, um, do you have maybe paint, right? Paint? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got some paint. Uh, let's see. I mean, yeah, I got I got paint over here, and she she's like digging around, and she goes, uh, she, you see her digging under the cabinets for shit. She's like, where did I put that? And she goes, uh, what color? Well, looks at that uh, bill. No. Um, white. Okay, hang on. And you see her run Wait, out what if of the it's store a white wall? really fast. What if it's a white wall? Oh, yeah, that's a good point, man. We should do, like, red. Yeah, red's good. Red's good. <laughs> or, like, blue. Oh. Okay. Or, like, green. Can he make something that has all the colors? Yeah. Yeah. She 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 frantically runs back and forth, and she comes <laughs> back with like a whole bunch of herbs in her hands, and like you, you can see here all the different colors of uh, the mortar and pestle that she has, and she's just working furiously, and uh, you know, and then she actually puts uh, she comes back and uh, puts puts the contents of each mortar and pestle into a glass beaker, mm. and. Uh, it, Lays them out for you right on the table. She's Thanks, got, man. Uh, she's got six colors right there. Like that'll be uh, what's it? About sixty uh, EP. Sixty what? Uh, EP. I wrote it as EP. Anybody know what EP is? That's like it's not, it's not color, copper. It's like uh, no, you know it's it's, it's sixty electrum. silver. We'll call it silver. Yeah, it's okay. Electrum. I probably put so it six wrong, gold. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. She's like, I'm excited to see this prank. Yeah. Who are you pranking? Torfido leans in. Real close. Yeah. Just some bigots, man. <laughs> some bigots? Yep. Ooh. Getting it, bigots. Well, hope they get what's coming to them. Good on you for not stooping to violence. Never violence. Not us. Not our way. Good. I like that. I like that. Well, good luck to you. Thank you, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. And as you go out the door... I As you walk out the door, she bananas. calls out to you. If you ever need something special, just come to old Darla. All right, man. Take care. She goes back to her work. Torfidel's going to head up to the hangout area. Did you get everything you need? Yeah, man, I got you guys some paint. But no bananas. Oh, yeah, we need to get some bananas, man. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Here, you guys get the bananas, man. We need, yeah. like, as many as you can get. Yeah, because you get hungry. Okay. Uh, Pendrick's gonna get up, and he's gonna go over to this kitchen. All right. Inside, a, 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 a chef is working his tail off. He's the only guy in the kitchen, and he's cooking up a, a, a bunch of meals all at once. Uh, you see him run up to the cutting board, da -da 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 -da, cooking, cutting vegetables at breakneck speed, running over Chef. to the oven. Hey, yes, yes, sir. Uh, As you can see, I'm a little busy. Can I purchase a crate of bananas? A crate of bananas? You didn't go to the... Uh, yes, a whole crate. That'll do. All right. And he runs over and he, he holds his hand out and he goes, that'll be sec six gold. All right. Oh, oh all right. Six seven, gold. seven gold. Sorry, I meant seven gold. Okay. And seven gold. Thank you. Uh, go right over there. And he points, he points to this guy's cart right over here. And he, he says to go, go take all you want. Do I need a note or something? I don't know. Just go take him. He's going to make an insight check and see if this guy's bullshitting me. Yeah, he's bullshitting you. Yeah. He, and uh, I imagine you give him a look. Yeah. And he's like, all right. Here you go. It's act he gives you your gold back. And he says, uh, sorry, they're not my bananas to sell. I apologize. I should, I should, I don't know what came over me. Well, I, you seem rather busy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. And he, he goes back to work it, but he, but he does point you at the, the actual crate of bananas over there. All right. And, he's going to uh, go over here. You know, I mean, there is a, there is suddenly a, a banana hawker. And he's like, bananas, <laughs> get your bananas. How much for a crate? Uh, six gold. Six. For, for a you? whole crate? I'll do seven. He gets oh. him seven gold. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And he, you know, he gives you a crate and he, he tips you an additional banana. Wow. Thank you. I have someone who will very much want this. Oh, thank you. All right. He's going to bring the crate over how many bananas would you say are in this crate i would say at least 25 or 30 all right that's probably like <laughs> six bunches he bring, he brings it over to where ool and them are i imagine uh not slow but in a way that shows that it is a very awkward amount of bananas to be dragging it's a it's a whole crate of them yeah yeah uh all right, uh, Dwarf Adil, I've collected uh, what you need. Oh, and, uh, why why are you burdened with that fruit? Uh, Dwarf Adil said he needed it. Uh, Ool, and he tosses Ool a banana. Ool starts peeling the banana and eating it. Yep, Dwarf Adil's just scarfing down bananas. We need the skin, <laughs> we need the peels. Banana energy. Start eating. <laughs> All right. Vendrick's <laughs> gonna grab a banana and start eating. <laughs> Every time we get a peel, Ool's gonna stuff it in the lantern. <laughs> okay. Well, Tootsie, you want some bananas? Mm. All right. And, uh,. Since he just opens her mouth. And uh, Bedrick will peel them and toss them into Tootsie's mouth. Uh, Tootsie will, will eat the banana. Oh, that, that's good. And then she'll go over and eat the peel. Ah, no, hold on. We need that. <laughs> oh. Why? I'm not sure, but Dwarfadil said he needed it. <laughs> so, Damn so it, we're just Samurai having a... Jake, stop cutting the bananas. Sorry, dude. Got 
got carried away there for a second. You keep tossing them in the air and cutting as many as you can. <laughs> yeah, back on my uh, on my island in the past, you know, they used to call me the uh, the fruit ninja, which is weird. <laughs> I don't know it's what that. Like a samurai, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I imagine with that, we have probably successfully gotten about twenty banana peels. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right. These were good. They'll be good to trip any pursuers. All right, here, uh, I would wrap up anything else you guys need to do. Um, At least you won't be hungry. Yeah, sounds like it's, uh, it's, you know, pretty well wrapped up, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's a wrap, huh? That's a wrap. How big is this crate? Uh, I would say that you certainly need both hands. You know, it's probably about the wooden. size of a... It's a wooden crate, about the size of a shopping cart. You know, okay, filled would it with... Would be... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, would it be big enough to put the goat head in? So at least we have, like... We're yeah. not just giving Bradshaw a raw hanging <laughs> around goat probably head. Good. It's probably just fine to put the goat head in. All right. Uh, you know, it'd probably even be good for you to hide under if uh, oh. <laughs> one were inclined to do that. Well, well do you want to throw the crate in there just no. in case? <laughs> okay. Dwarfadil? It is wood. Nah. Ah. We'll put the goat head in it, and then I guess we'll head to Bradshaw's unless other people want to do something. Yeah, sure. I'm well, are we going to are we going dude. to Bradshaw's or are we doing? Are we going to sit out a heist? Uh, we got to drop off this goat head first. Bradshaw's okay. first, and then uh, we're going to prank Voight, dude. Hell yeah! All right, we go to can head on over to Bradshaw's as you guys leave the uh, leave the bazaar with a little more supply a few more supplies uh, than you came in with let's see uh, I imagine Vendrick shows you guys on the map where Bradshaw's place is um, and you all uh, make your way over there walking through the, the streets and it gets progressively nicer and nicer part of the city. Um, but fewer and fewer people until there's no people at all. And you get a little bit of a spooky feeling. Uh, but it is daytime. Mm. And it's not that spooky. Uh, you guys find yourself at the gate of a beautiful... Uh, beautiful estate i mean it is huge and it is overlooking a cliff and below it is uh, uh well it's the prison that you guys had been to before rather uh gaudy it's this is it all we need to do is drop off the goat head if we get anything else from this little visit, then all the better. Yeah, dude. All right. Um, as you guys uh, are here, you see a huge lumbering guard uh, walking down the path. Put him on tokens. Oh wow. He's uh, huge. He has giant. Uh, he, he, he's gigantic. Uh, he has a uh, a big single-edged blade in one hand. Uh, totally covered face with gray skin. Mm. Boom, boom. 
He sort of Can... takes note of you, sees you all of a sudden, and just uh, stomps his foot, and it just shakes the ground, and you uh, you you feel it, the earth tremble just a little bit. Nope. And he just stands there and stares at you. What's up, dude? Uh, he doesn't damn. respond. He just stands there still. Uh, Jake's gonna try nice. stomping his foot back. Nothing. Alright, well, I'm all out of ideas. But bros. he is watching you very intently. But you, you can't really see his face. Hmm. You want me to go talk to him? Yeah, you seem like um, like you've lived a long like life. A, yeah, you <laughs> seem like a wise guy who can like, you know, have a good conversation without starting a fight with this uh, character. I imagine Horace was in the middle of saying that, and Jake fucking cut him off with the yeah. You seem like you've lived long enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Uh, he's gonna. I guess walk up, you know, uh, his sword's on his back and his hands in a, a non-threatening sort of place on his body. Uh, I guess his belt, right, as he's walking up. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to make another gesture, kind of like wave a bit, and uh, go, hey, uh, is your master it? He looks at you, and he just growls deeply. And he looks at the rest of your party, and he looks and he sees uh, Samurai Jake and Horus, and he growls again. And uh, this time, it's actually pretty loud. And mm. as he does, as he does, the... You hear a, you hear something behind the door. This, and it's a little boy. And he goes, oh, that's enough. That's enough. These are our guests. Don't be rude to them. Uh, uh, stand down. And he takes a step back. And he, he nods his head a little bit. And this little boy looks like... Got to post the pic for you guys. Give me a second. Big shit-eating grin, always on his face. And he goes, hello, 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 hello. My name's Norton. Uh, I am the man of the house. It's, uh, hate him already. It's good to meet you. Hate him already. Yeah, Nor Norton Bradshaw, by the way. He he leans to the side uh, as he approaches Vendrick, and he, he calls out to everybody. That's right. Uh, that's right. I am man of the house while my uh, caretaker is away. You mean dad? No. Caretaker. What are you? I'm a little boy. I mean, my, I my name's Norton. I, actually, I'm the man of this house. When he's about to say little boy, we'll inter interrupt and go, girl. Uh, oh, of course <laughs> not. Of course not. Uh, Can't you see? It no. Vedrick's going to fumble in with it and just go, uh, excuse my uh, compatriots. That's right. Uh, That's right. Master Bradshaw. And he Thank you. he gives a, a respectable bow. We actually um, came here to give you something that you might want. Uh, we oh. came to deliver something that I, I'm not sure if it's you, Master Bradshaw, or your caretaker, uh, wished. Uh, yeah, Chimera's goat head. Um, as per Master Voigt's uh, request. Ooh. Ooh, let me see. He gestures, oh, I, I guess, these. to Horus. Uh, I'll pull the goat head out of the uh, out of the old rhinoceros bag here and throw it on the ground like in the movie 300 where he throws the heads on the ground. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. 
I guess it falls right here. He goes, so thanks a lot, Horace. <laughs> yeah, he's like, Ugh, thanks a lot. And he uh, he snaps his he snaps his fingers and he's like he he, he points at uh, Jacob uh -uh. and he says, Jacob, put put that back in the box, please. You, you mean me, dude? Yes, you. Um. Yeah, sure, but like, uh, how did you know my name? I hadn't said it yet. Oh, uh, Mr. Bradshaw, my family has eyes and ears everywhere. We've known we've known about you for for days, actually. Um, you have. But uh, yes, I mean, we are one of the most powerful families in the city. If not, actually, we're the most powerful family in the city. <clears throat> but, um... How prophetic. What about, uh... Wait. <laughs> well, what about him? Is he... I mean, he seems to think he's the most powerful guy. Well, of course he does. He, he has such a beautiful place, but... You know, he wouldn't have that without us. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, my... My caretaker has bailed him out plenty of times. I feel I like this is like uh, that guy from Grandma's Boy where he keeps saying my roommates because he lives with his parents. <laughs> <laughs> my roommates would be real mad about that. <laughs> he uh, he snaps his fingers at, at this guy and he goes, take this in, please. He just goes, Bruh. he picks up the goat head. And, uh, you know, oh, runs off with it. Before I forget, uh, Vendrick yeah. is going to uh, step up and pull out from his pouch uh, the letter that was from Void. Hmm. Yeah. He goes, ooh, ooh. And uh, he snatches it out of your hand, like, as you're handing it to him. Oh. He's very impatient. And uh, he just opens it up and starts reading it. He's like, oh, how nice. How nice. He thinks this will repay his debt. Well, truth be told, it is nice of him to do this. But uh, He seemed uh, rather confident that this would repay his debt. Oh, did he? He looks up over the paper at you guys. Goes, yes. Wow. Uh, I mean, but, to be honest, he made it sound like whatever you did for him was rather insignificant. I assure you, what we did for him was, uh, we, we, well, let's just say we're certainly not square right now. Well, I must but admit, this is... my curiosity is big. It is hip oh. to be square. Oh, that you are. That you are, Horace. Um, Why do you keep saying my name? like? Because we know all about you. That's why. Anyways, yes, if you must know... He he was a uh, a little bit of a, a gambler on occasion, and uh, we've uh, we my uh, caretaker bailed him out. Foot the bill. Interesting. Foot the bill for a moment. Uh, he does owe us favors. We wouldn't we wouldn't ask for uh, uh, you know directly for money. I mean, look around. We have plenty of that. But uh, you know, when the time comes. We get favors, and this is uh, this is, this goes this goes a long way. He pats the, well, he would have patted the goat head if it was still here, but uh, he goes, "Thank you very much for bringing it." Um, mm, uh, Master, mm, Master Bradshaw, may I impose a question? Uh, go ahead. You say that Void has a gambling problem. Mm-hmm. Could he? Could he have gambled? Oh, certainly not. I don't think so. I mean, he's... I mean, it's been a long... Well, been a while. he thinks for a moment. He's like, I find it very hard to believe that he would gamble something of that value. Mm -hmm. I see. I have heard the Oracle was quite a powerful Oh yes. Well, he looks over we, at uh, he looks over at uh, Jacob. 
and he starts just walking around through you guys, kind of impishly. Uh, looking at your, uh, looking, eyeing you guys up and down, looking at you. He looks at your lantern, uh, ooh, and he goes, ooh. Beat you. Very nice. Back I like that. Girl. Hey. And he backs up. He comes over and he looks up at Jacob Kane and he's like, cool sword, man. Thanks, dude. I, uh, I found it. Um, in some Abilene shit. I found it. Oh. You, you found it. And I've always wanted a sword. Do you, do you have an extra one? No, nah, he doesn't have an extra sword. I've got two, but I need them both. Um, you know. You need. Uh, <laughs> can I just have the one? It doesn't have to be magic. Trade him for a ticket. You know, there's like a, a weapons dealer in the Grand Bazaar, right, dude? Oh, I'm not allowed to have one yet. Soon. No, oh, well, then I definitely don't want to upset your caretaker, bro. Mm. All right. Well, I'd best be getting back to my duties. Uh, and he looks back at you guys, and he he goes Ooh. up the stairs, and he turns back around and looks at you again, and he goes, well, go on. Chew. And he, uh, the door opens up, seemingly without him touching it. Wait, do we want to get, uh, do we want to try and get something from this kid before he deuces? Mm. Or we just gave him the goat head because. Did anyone I'm like sure. cough expectantly to see oh, if we can oh, get like a tip or something, fine. dudes? Hold on, Vendrick will. Okay. Uh, Master uh, Bradshaw. He turns around since, and looks at you. Since you are the man of the house, we do need a letter of confirmation. Uh. Oh, right, of course. Wait, where are my manners? And he disappears inside real quick. I'm not. He, Vendrick will turn to the party as as he's gone. I'm not sure what else we can glean. Unless someone else has a plan, I'm rather stumped. You have the tag. So I will pull out the obsidian like tags I. Seemed rather interested in warbles. Is a warble. And to be quite frank, unless one of you wants to try to put this in the sky, I know it's the absolutely most necessary thing I need to hold on to. It does. Assuming we do barter it, what do we barter for, exactly? I see no reason to do it without that in mind. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Something about him makes me think that he that they've uh, burned their ticket already, dudes. He seemed rather... As you guys uh, are whispering amongst yourselves, the doors kick open. Uh, faster than <laughs> this kid could have kicked them open. Even though it's, it is a yeah. sort of suspicious. You don't see anybody inside. And he walks down here with a paper and uh, there's some uh, there's a he has a folded piece of paper and uh, he's printed uh, basically uh, I Bradshaw Hereby declare that the the goods of one goat head were delivered by, and he writes out all of your names, and he signs it, just Bradshaw, and he hands it to you, Vendrick. Vendrick uh, accepts it. He gives oh, you a you. huge toothy smile, and it's a little unnerving. And he's like, hmm. "Good luck," and he disappears back inside and the doors boom, slam shut. All right. Vendrick will, well, he, he will give a, uh, 
like he won't say bye or anything. He'll just give like a respectable nod. Uh, before turning around to the rest of them. I don't like this place. Yeah, let's get going, dudes. Agreed. All right. Bye. So I... Real quick. You go, you go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, as you guys are leaving... Uh, again, you sort of realize, sort of notice, I mean, it's eerily quiet, and yeah, you guys are, let's see, on your way out, mm -hmm. and it's sort of getting dark. Uh, well, it's not really getting dark, it's, it's, it will be dark soon, um, and, you know, it's probably the, uh, getting to be, uh, the later afternoon, so... I guess if if you know if the the gang is um, well supplied, it, it might be time to. I, I assume you guys are going on to the the rest of your mission. Yeah. All right. Well, would you say that we would get to the vineyard at night? Is that kind of what you're implying? That's sort of what I'm implying. Now? If you go, okay. if you go now, you'll you'll get there at night. The perfect cover for a sneak mission. And you're well, not bringing even, the box. <laughs> do we even make our presence known, or do you, Ool, and Dwarf Adil go in there before we arrive, so to speak? Sure. All right. Well, I can I assume that all of you are going to at least be walking outside of the city? Yeah, I think we're all, we're yeah. all going out. Okay, sounds good. Well, then I would say that you know, you, you go you guys uh make your way out of there. There's there's more people in the rest of the city. Uh, it's not so abandoned. Uh and the air feels better doesn't you don't have such a, a you know a sinister air on the sinister feeling on the air what you know, and you could be wrong with that place do you think well considering the bradshaw child knew our names and was seemingly very eager to tell us it something makes me suspect that they've already used their ticket they probably know that whatever we're about to do is going to be beneficial to them irregardless and why the feeling? Why is there no one there? One servant? One single servant? Can I infer something, Nate? I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to GM you this ability. Even though it doesn't say this, like it doesn't say that it would let me infer something. Okay. But maybe through like a mutual um, thing in life. Deathless nature. Okay, and what are you trying to infer? Is that big guy, was he undead? He was not undead. Okay. That arcana what I assume. We know they do rituals there. You know that. You know that elder Uh Rachel, you're <clears throat> you're really uh, quiet on the mic. I remember you're mm -hmm. far away from the microphone uh, tonight. The we do know that the elder is currently missing as well as On top of that, the, he, he didn't particularly give his name, and that's a, that's a thing that you do with Fae. You don't give them your full name, otherwise you, they have control over you. It's a, it's a myth. Sometimes it's real, sometimes it's not. 
Sometimes it's real with demons, too. Irregardless, I just simply think we shouldn't get involved. We have enough to deal with with the other two. Fair enough. One ticket is the goal. If we can get two, then all the better. Therein lies the curiosity of that. But that's a more personal matter. Hmm. Right now, we should focus on the basket hand. They are. All right. Well, I'll say you guys have, uh, you know, you've sort of had this conversation on the road. You all are walking towards Voight's Vineyard. You guys know the way. You've been there twice already. Mm -hmm. um, as you approach, I assume you're, uh, you know, I assume that you're not going right up to the door. Uh, that's why I said you guys are about to be about here. Yeah, we're off the beaten path. Right You're off the beaten path, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I was gonna put my token here for like just space. So it's yeah. sure we're, we're this direction. Uh, and uh, you know, out of game, just as you move, don't feel like you have to measure your uh, <laughs> your movement or anything like that. Just uh, do what makes sense. Dwarf a dill, uh, ool. How um, how dark is it outside? It's pretty dark. Uh, there is lighting, as you can see. Um, strangely, some of the plants along the road uh, give off some, you know, bioluminescence. Would I notice, as a layman, would I notice a bat flying around in the sky or no? Uh, barely. Barely. It's an okay. owl, yeah. though. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. I have shadows some mole, uh, mole, which would make us even more obscured. Oh, harder to see in the dark. Well, because what I'm thinking is I could polymorph you all if you wanted to. Uh, I could just turn invisible. Oh. Well, you just go turn invisible and I'm going to wild shape into a owl. Yeah, it will just... Uh, invisibility. Okay. Boom. Boom. Ool's wow. invisible. Wait, I can turn you invisible too. You wanted to. Nah. I'm just gonna fly in there, man. <laughs> Nobody's gonna expect a screeching owl is up to anything bad. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll turn invisible and start flying over. Do you okay. think they shall be successful? Well, I trust our companion's ability to do what it is that they do best. What is that? So what are we doing? <laughs> Vendrick... Who forgets what he's doing while he's in the sky? <laughs> Torfidel knows exactly what he's doing. Vendrick <laughs> doesn't say anything responding to Drigal. <laughs> he just <laughs> stares off. <laughs> Do you need me to do recon for you? We'll be able to keep a contact in case you need a second pair of eyes. I would definitely keep on keep in contact with one of the two. Ooh, well, as you're flying over, are you still a man-sized creature flying? Ooh's yeah. invisible, I believe. Yeah, oh, I'm he's invisible. invisible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he's a silent. He's a silent owl. So. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. As Dorfidel's flying over, you just hear a horrible. <laughs> Jeez. This, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, guard over here, he's like peering out over. He's like, what the hell? Okay. Before before we go too far ahead, I will I'll make certain before Dorfidel wild ships, he has my little token thing so this way I can actually contact him. And keep in contact. Um, do you want me to keep the second pair of eyes thing as well? That's up to you. Like, well, yeah. I'm, a I'm, a I'm, I'm asking you. Like, do you want that? Like, me to be able to be like, hey, there's actually something over here because I can see in the dark. Dorfino can see in the dark. Okay, yeah, I can see in I the dark too. Okay, we all can. Um, 
then I won't do a second pair of eyes because that leaves me blind. Um, I'll just be able to like mentally communicate with you if you need it, uh, as you have like a little token uh, for me. That's it. Uh, Google's going to fly over the house. All right. And when when he does, he's going to activate a uh, ghostly gaze. <laughs> so, uh, my genie fucking oh, that's the wrong one. You got to tell me what a uh, ghostly gaze. Does. Uh, there it is. Uh, because I wouldn't let me copy and paste it. Ghostly gaze. That's an action. Gain the ability to see through solid objects to a range of thirty feet within that range. You have dark vision if you don't already have it. It lasts for a minute or uh, until your concentration ends uh, as if you were concentrating on a spell. During that time, you perceive objects as ghostly transparent images. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me... And so where exactly are you looking? Uh, right over the roof right here. Okay, so you're just staring down into the floor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, roof. Or, right, into the roof. Okay. Uh, are you landed on the roof right now? No. Okay, but you're just close enough. Okay, so what yeah. I'm going to do then is I am going to reveal some area. And you look down through this roof and you see a... a essentially a master bedroom uh, there's a fireplace on the left hand side there's some cabinets and drawers a bathroom of course and a man sleeping in a king size bed you know that man to be Boyd uh, and we, make we a perception check as well please we should have put Aya in the lantern so that she could see oh, what man. Hull's doing the relight to dwarf Uh, Bull is going to take out that salve and rub it on him. The, the salve <laughs> of maximum shrinkage? Yeah, he'll go down a size. Okay, yeah, sure. You He's are, uh, you are like you're little. You're like a little gnome-sized owl, which I guess yeah. would be maybe a regular-sized big owl. Yeah, he's gonna go down into the chimney. Okay. It is. Uh, it is hot. I mean, there yeah. is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is fire. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you? All right. I'll get you, in the does, arms of an angel. Cue down. Does fire hurt you? Uh. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's fire. <laughs> okay. I would say uh you know, yeah. roll uh roll two D six. I mean you're going down a hot chimney with a with a roaring fire, I guess. See, if they were smart, they would have put a grill in the fireplace. I'll take six, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're currently in the fight you're you're currently like climbing down this chimney taking some burn damage. Let's go over to Dwarfadil. What is Dwarfadil up to? Uh, Dwarfadil is just flying around looking for where the booze is stored. Okay. Let's see. Well, as you're flying around, you don't really see any... I'll, I'll actually tell you what you see as you're doing recon right now. Um, you okay. see a beautiful house. Uh, you, you, you've been here before. The, uh, the, the party area is over down in the, the southern area. Um, you see these uh, gazebos. Obviously, you see the uh, the guard here. Um, but something that you may or may not have noticed is um, right over here. There's a side entrance. Oh, kind of like a like underground basement area to the chateau. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Uh, Dorfadil will try to land over here as an owl. Okay. Um, as you're landing, you also see something 
over here under this gazebo. That's... And by something, I mean a uh, maybe some stairs. Oh, there's some stairs under the gazebo? Yes. Or if it'll fly back up and then fly back to the gazebo, then. Okay. He's an owl after all. He is an owl after all. All right. You're on top of the gazebo. Uh, let me make sure this. Um, and so are you trying to go in the gazebo at all? Uh, yeah. Yeah, whole, uh, okay. fly down and, like, kind of hurt and then take the ground and then how uh how stealthy are you being um i mean he's just kind of he thinks he's being very stealthy but he's also an owl and he's trying to pretend to be an owl okay oh you are literally a wild shaped animal right now okay yeah so i'm literally a fucking go. like yeah 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 eight okay. inch tall owl all right so uh i think those you. owls have a pretty banger stealth roll though Oh yeah, you, you are literally a silent flying. <laughs> you are silent. Okay, so let me reveal some stuff. All right. Now, you over here are inside of this gazebo. Um, you have a you have a some vision that can you know, let you see down into this area. Uh, but you see another guard, actually, just sort of, like, sitting here on the at the bottom of the steps. Hmm. All right, Dorfidil's gonna... Yeah, Dorfidil will fly in right up, right and perch himself on the on the top of the stairs here. All right. You see this guy. He's just lazing about. He's leaning back on the stairs. Um, do you do you try to get any attention at all, or are you totally silent? What are uh, you doing here? Perched? No, Dorfadil's gonna like look at him and make some owl noises and turn his head sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's pretty good. He uh grabs his pike really quickly and he looks back and he's like, what the hell? He's like, oh. <laughs> Just a now. He goes, shoo, get out of here. Scram. It, what's what's at the bottom of the stairs? Uh it looks like Hold up. Uh, it looks like there are various plants down there. It's a weed. Uh, it's like a nice, it's like maybe a nice little garden. You can't see exactly what's down there, but it's like, I don't know. Might be nice. Might be dead. I use my owl spidey senses to see if I hear a mouse down there. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, do your do that. No, no mouse. All right, Dorfidel's gonna fly down uh, under there anyway. What the hell? He's gonna like, he's gonna be like, oh god, we got fucking animals in here. All right, so now I'm gonna reveal a new area for you. Yeah, he was just tasked with guarding from people, <laughs> not animals. He's like, always oh, something. I tell you. I tell you. All right. And now you should see. Uh oh. Gotta hide some shit. All right. Uh, you should be right here. Okay. And uh, that. I'll just drag that guard over here. Guard. And uh, the guard is chasing you around with his pike. <laughs> he's like, get on. He's like, come on. Scram. Shoot. Uh, goes, Dorf Pete, a little help. Dorfidil's going to fly uh, down the hall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. You're Dorf flying down the hall. 
Uh, he's an owl. He's an owl. He's flying down the hall. He's like, owl on the loose. Uh, and then he's not going to yell. He knows it's nighttime, you know. Uh, but yeah, I assume you got you got some more you got some more vision, right? He's like, get back here, you little fucker. And he's chasing you. And I want you to roll a uh, a dex save. Okay. Uh, Remember, you are an owl. Oh, that's true. Uh, so that would be. Oh, All right. he, he, he uh, first off, I'm going to say down here, there is a, a decorative garden and it looks very nice. It's uh, it's it's very um, uh, uh, tasteful, it's very tasteful. Uh, I need you to roll a 1D4. And that'll okay. be the damage, because he just clips you. Oh, shit. All right, you take four damage. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, How much HP does the owl form have? Uh, 1d4 minus one. Whatever fuck ever that means. Oh, um, no, it's just, it's just one hit point. Oh, okay. That's what a regular owl has. Unless you're a giant owl, but I'm pretty sure you're a normal owl. No, nope, basically a normal owl. All right, roll a 2d6 right now. All right. Eight. Okay. I, I'd Sorry, say ten. Good. It double rolled. Okay, all good. I would say, tell me something that you do. Uh, you're not going to be allowed to have owl shape anymore. But uh, can you do anything creative to sort of escape or hide? or What do you do when you, uh, uh, if you, you feel yourself being un-owled? Okay, so I only have a short... Uh, distance I can go still as an owl. Correct. Okay. Okay. What's 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 around me? There's there's the guard and the plants behind me and then what's in front of me. All right. You're looking down a hallway. There's double doors on either side right about here. Um, I, maybe I need to reveal some more. Uh, but yeah, it's basically just a long hallway. Okay. Uh, are the doors open? No. These doors are not. Um, fucking hell, I guess he's just going to try to get as far down the hall as he can. All right. He's got a 60 <laughs> foot fly speed. You rip down. I will say you can get to be about here. OK, can um, I get to be like on the other side, like around the corner? Just a second. No, no. You're going to be right here. OK, one square below. I'll just move you and uh, poof, you poof into your human form. And uh, this guy is like, you hear someone go like, what the hell? And then you look back real quickly, Dwarf Adil, and you see him rubbing his eyes. And, you know, it's late at night. And uh, you dip around that corner. Oh. And you don't know, you don't know what happened. Let me reveal some more space and then we'll get back to Ool. Huh? What was that noise? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me reveal what you see down in here. All right. In you are in kind of like a warehouse room. Uh, looks like there's a lot of barrels. Um, you see a door up to your northern side, and oh, or sorry. Uh, I want you to roll a stealth check right now. You are in human form. Uh, dwarf Doe. Oh, oh, sorry. It's all good. I thought you were talking about Wolf. I know, I misspoke. Uh, was that gonna be a... Uh... Okay, you're breathing hard uh, and you know it, you gotta lock in. You almost oh, got caught in like the first five seconds of this, uh, this, <laughs> this thing. So you're going to catch a breath right here. Uh, Ooh, you're over, uh, on the roof looking down and you see Mr. Voigt himself, uh, through the rooftop. 
uh, didn't I go down into the chimney? Oh, sorry, I apologize. Yes, you okay. did climb down through the chimney that is currently uh, on fire. I need you to roll another 2d6. Okay. Cooked bird. Okay. Uh, your feathers are smoking a little bit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And you do roll out of this chimney. Uh, acutely aware that... Well, I, I, I mean, I guess you, you, you put out a little bit of a... Yeah. <laughs> some fire on your feathers. Yeah. Uh, and you're... I get, what are you rolling your intelligence save for? I uh, just see, realize I need to pat down. Okay. I would say that's a pretty common... That, you know, that's pretty instinctual. So 14 mm -hmm. for sure. You know. Pat it. <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll, you know. Um, he's gonna... Because ghostly gaze, I can see intangible object, uh, objects through things as well. So, like, they're intangible. Um, where was that? Uh, you, uh, oh, god dang it, I just closed out of it. During this time, perceived objects as ghostly, transparent images. So, he will percept your own for the ticket. Okay. All right, so you're specifically looking around for a ticket? Okay, 16. You gaze around. You see a lot of finely crafted things. Um, lots of uh, nice nice baubles, like a nice silver watch. Uh, but you don't see a ticket on any of the desks. Inside, again, there's nice things around. Uh, you see a, a small chest over on the far side uh, filled with gold. At least you, at least some kind of metal. Uh, and then you look over at Mr. Voigt himself, and you see underneath of his clothing, he has a little wallet tied to a string around his neck. And you think, if you were a golden ticket, that's where you'd be hiding. It uh, is one threat. of the most... Oh, well, okay. You look at it, and yeah, you see that you see the ticket inside of there. Okay. Uh, and Sorry. just to just to clarify, it is in a wallet on his person, under his clothes, with a string around it, around his neck. But uh, roll a stealth, please. Okay, you're pretty stealthy. Uh, that tumble out of the fireplace was, you know, painful and a little loud. But uh, you look over and whew, he's just uh, yawning and uh, slumbering peacefully in his bed. Um, okay. So, so first of all, he's going to activate um, Elemental Gift. And he's going to gain a fly speed. Um, just a magical fly speed uh, with hovering, so he'll activate that so he can move around silently. Okay, so you get a so you get a literally just hover. Yeah, so he'll go up, like up, 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 up around. He'll All take right. the he'll uh, put the chest into the lantern. Okay. Um, uh, it it does clink a little bit as you lift it up. Clink, clink. And, and uh, roll a d20, please. Okay, nothing happens. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, I assume you come over to the bed. Yeah, yeah. He's hovering right next to him. Do I kill him? Do I kidnap him? Or do I try to steal it? This is a good, <laughs> Ooh, this is a good question for Ooh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I out loud. Is uh, is Aya connected to him right now in any way, or is she, is she connected with Dwarfado? Dwarfado. She's okay. Dwarf Ool's on his own. Now hold on. Oh. Is this Ooh. him having a moral dilemma, or is this trying to remember exactly which of those three things he was supposed <laughs> to be doing? Yeah. It's those three things. Let's go, Ted. <laughs> 
He remembers there were three things. <laughs> yes. Right now he's contemplating. I could kidnap him. This is all in his head. He's like, I could kidnap him. That would that would solve a lot of things. But then I gotta kill him later on anyhow. I could kill him now and then take it. And that solves that issue. Or I could try to take it. Was this guy polite to Ool? He was trying to remember. He was. He gave you uh he gave you plenty of wine. Which Ool did not partake in, but he offered at the very least. That's true. Cool. Wait, wait, what am I doing? He says, I could summon. I think my monkey has a good sleight of hand. <laughs> no! Does he? Oh no! Does he have this? Mm, let me oh, see. let's see what the Bargula has. He has a, a plus two to death. What about, what about the birdie bird? Mm, he has telepathy. Mm. Mm. Honestly, I didn't think I would make it this far. This is the odd part. The bear and the monkey both have the same sleight of hand check. So, uh, you know what? Ul's gonna try to slide a hand. All right. Uh, where's my sleight of hand? Does that? Are you, ro are you rolling with advantage? Invisibility. Well, I don't know why it's rolling with advantage. Oh, because I have it normal. Sorry. Um. Now here's the question. He is asleep. He is asleep. Does uh, invisibility but... give you anything? Actually, that's a good question. Oh. I actually genuinely don't I, know. I, I, don't, I, I don't think it does. The invisibility. But uh, that it just says a creature becomes invisible to the spell ends, and the target is burning or carrying is invisible as long as it is on the target's person. The spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell. All right. So it's not um, it's not the cantrip, but whatever. Well, oh, I remember it's greater invisibility has like a bunch of extra stuff tied to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you're trying to lift it from it? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll say first step, uh, you know, he's pretty well snuggled in these mm. uh, in his comforter. I love that sound effect. Uh, and you're trying to gently pull back the covers. And... Uh, yeah, again, you hear a yawn. And uh, with an eight, he sort of <clears throat> pulls those covers and rolls back over and goes back uh, to sleep. Okay. That wasn't a, that wasn't as effective as uh, it could have been. We'll, we'll, mm, okay, we'll try again. While Ul is thinking about this, we're going to switch back over to Dwarfadil. Dwarfadil. Yeah, man. You're, you're, you're invisible. You are so well hidden. It's not even funny. And this guy, he's like, what the hell? You hear him walking down the hallway. You're pretty well stealthed. Uh, he's, you know, he's about to come around the corner, but huh? you did. What was that noise? critical your your stealth how do you hide dorfadil just stands in this corner just if <laughs> <laughs> is a board all right uh, okay and uh he walks over here and he looks around and he's like that fucking algo ah whatever someone else's problem and you hear him walk back down the hallway. Oh, he probably sees this guy. Maybe he thinks like, ah, he'll, he'll deal with. Ah, he he's like, my mind must have just been playing tricks on me. He's not, uh, he, he, you know, he, he doesn't think it was really, uh, you know, a, a man. He's like, how could it? How could that be? But you're yeah. up, man. All right. Uh, let's oh, see. Oh, let here. me just tell you what you see. I think 
Uh, again, you see a, a man up in the top left uh, working on barrels. He's okay. kind of like a carpenter. Um, you notice that the the right next to you is a whole bunch of grapes harvested from the vineyard, and they're not squished yet. They're just, you know, in their crates. Uh, there's a door to the north, and uh, it looks like an open door right about here as well. All right, Dorfidel's going to, first of all, grab a handful of grapes, get a snack on, okay. and then he's going to sneak around the pile and eat to see if he can see through this door on his right. They taste really, really good. All right, let me reveal some berries. All right, that's about what you see from there. Just, oh, is that a is that a giant bat? You have to get closer to see. Yeah, Dorfidel. All right, Dorfidel, Dorfidel, Dorfidel you're solid his ass up. All right. <laughs> Head, head panned on. He looks in here, and indeed, it does look like a uh, a vat room. All right, He's gonna quickly dash dash across, sneaking behind the uh, containers. All right. Uh, you hear something in this room. Okay. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's like sweeping. It's like a sweeping sound. A sweeping sound? Like uh, like someone's sweeping. Oh. Uh, Dorfidel's gonna go and once he rounds the corner, he's gonna take a peek. Right. He sees anybody. Dorfidel takes his peek. And there is indeed a maid uh, standing atop of a platform that goes between six gigantic vats of something, probably wine. And uh, yeah, she's just working here. All right. There, there's a door to the north. Uh, doors around you. Um, so yeah. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. All right, we're going to cut over to Ool. <laughs> what are you up to? Well, do, do it again. All right, go ahead. All Ooh. right. All right. You successfully, you peel back the covers right out of his hands. And... I put a banana in the hands. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> He, the banana's in his hands, and he he like snuggles with that a little bit. Um, yeah, Voight is sound asleep right now, and you can see him in his nightgown, his you know his little pajamas. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, do you still have the the vision allowing you to see through things? Yeah. Okay. Well, you see the 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 wallet wrapped around his neck, but it is under. Oof. Oof. All right. Oh, no. I assume that was to grab the wallet, yes? Yeah. All right. He, uh, uh. You, you, you just yank at it. You're just so greedy. You just grab right at the wallet. And uh, are you invisible? I'm pretty sure you are. Yeah, I am. Okay, you grab at it, and he bolts up. He sits right up, and it's... He clutches at his uh, at the wallet right on his chest, and he looks around, bewildered. He looks at the banana in his hand. And he's like, "What the hell? Huh? What was uh, that noise?" And as he sits up, his face is a mere inch from yours, but he can't see you because you're totally invisible. Ghoul's gonna, because of the hover magic flight, he's just gonna slowly rise. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. All right. He, uh, you see the panic in, an eye, in his eyes sort of go away. Uh, but he, uh, he lays back down, but his eyes are still open. Uh, shortly, 
Shortly thereafter, he does uh, relax a bit. And you see him go back to sleep. But you get the idea of... If you just grabbed at that wallet again with uh, with that <laughs> that small amount of finesse, he would wake right back up. I right. do well, you that is that is perfect. You go right back after that wallet. <laughs> you you like this hell? time. What you do is you you gently place your feathery <laughs> fingers on that wallet, and then you you slide your other hand underneath of his sleeping head, tilting it up just a bit and you pull the loop over and you've got the wallet in your hand and it's off of weight. Is that you magical? Also notice it is. Son of a bitch, I thought magic was supposed to be outlawed. The other thing you notice is that uh, the wallet in an outer pouch has a key in it. And where's this key in the stomach? No, it's in the wallet. <laughs> Wait, what? The key, it's a it's like it's almost like a little purse, honestly. There's like an okay. interior where the uh where the golden ticket is. Yeah. But yeah. on the outer side of the wallet, there's a key. Like a key hole? In a, in a little in a little pouch. Like oh. it's literally a physical key in a little pouch. He okay. probably should have kept it in his stomach, though. You wouldn't be yeah. stealing it. If... Yeah, you wouldn't be stealing it. <laughs> I mean, at this point, this guy's so paranoid. <laughs> um, so Ul's got it. He'll put it in his bag of holding. Um, so then he's gonna take the banana peels and he's just gonna plop them all around the bed. Okay. <laughs> and he's gonna put some on the pillows next to him. You're rigging like, no. this place for a prank, aren't you? I, I I mean, I have to play the part here. Okay. And then uh, as Ul gets it, he goes, y'all go back through the chimney. All right. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Uh, roll another <laughs> 2d6, please. Wow. Okay. Your feathers are so burned, you can't fly. That's magical flight I'm flying with right now. Okay. Damn. He's, he's damn. You, damn. you <laughs> fucked over the DM, didn't you? I've been I am not going to fuck over the DM. I did switch to the magical flight because it is magical. It is silent. Pure silent. All right. Damn. You hover on out. Uh, when I get above the house, he will try to open the pouch and make sure it is the ticket. Are you sure you want to open this pouch? Yeah, you're right. You it open sounds it like and it you makes were. you lose your magical flight. <laughs> <laughs> Intelligence save. I should probably do an arcana check. Yeah, I have no idea what this is, but I'll bring it back at the very least. All right. I I didn't kill anyone. That's weird. <laughs> As Ul starts flying back towards the group. All right. Drug, uh, not Dragul. Dwarfadil, you're down inside. All right, man. Dwarfadil is going to cast... The greatest spell in the world. I don't think you're ready for this. Summon greater demon? He's gonna Probably polymorph more. the maid into a mouse. You're gonna turn her into a mouse? Yep. Okay. She uh she's sweeping and then her she her like face grows longer and she just shrinks down, sprouts a little tail. And she's just squeaking. And uh, she like runs out of the room. Maybe she'll get got by one of the owls. And then Dorfidil's <laughs> gonna run up 
and nature will find a way. <laughs> he's gonna run up to the vats and he's gonna start pouring some of the disgusting liquid in each of the vats as quickly as he can. All right, as you uncork it, poof! The horrible putrid smell just expands out like all through this room. Uh, and you just start, I guess you just start pouring, huh? Yep. All right. Just as quickly as I can, L some and all. A little of them. bit goes a long way. Just boom, 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 boom. You're doing that. Uh, so while, while you're doing that, this little mouse is like squeaking, 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 going up. I, I will note that he does save a tiny bit in the bottle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I, I will say that uh, you're getting this, while you're getting this done, this mouse runs back in, and he's like, this guy's running. He's like, come here, you little fucker. Huh? Whose footprints are these? <laughs> I, didn't have a, I didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> this mouse is like, this mouse is like uh, running around trying to get this guy's attention he's like freaking rodents he's walking in what do you do do i can i the mouse can i the sneak mouse around looks into the shadows over? this way i'll say that's okay the mouse saw you do that though and Is, are uh are these stairs conti continuing to squeak nope that's a dead end unfortunately um and this guy's like oh gosh nasty little things and this uh, this mouse is just like squeaking right here and running around, uh, trying to get this guy's attention. And he's slowly walking up over this up these stairs. Torfidel's gonna jump over the ledge and hang off. All right, he's gonna come up here, and this mouse is like gonna be right, up, you know, right, right there. And this coming guy's towards me, coming towards you. All right, I'll let go and drop to the ground the uh the mouse is continuing to sit there looking at you and this uh this guard picks up the broom that was let dropped on the ground <laughs> he comes over and gives the mouse a whack Oops. and the mouse it goes unconscious now i'm Does pretty it sure drop that's to not zero how hit points no, it's just a, it's just a, it's it's a, it's a KO'd mouse for now. Okay. It's not, it's just out of commission. It didn't really damage it. He just swept it. You know, like, you know. So he walks back. He's like, what the hell? Isn't there supposed to be somebody working in here? And uh, I guess, I guess uh, the next question is, Ool, are you just flying back to the gang? Or are you going to keep? Uh... Yeah. All right. Just okay. want to make sure that just want to make sure that you're, uh, you know, that you're yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he's flying back to the gang. Um, like he knows Dorfordil's doing stuff, but he also doesn't know where Dorfordil is, and he's like, I probably should get the pouch to the gang so they can try to verify it if it is the ticket before we conclude tonight, because. I feel like security is going to be really ramped up because of banana peels. I'd say that's probably true. And a single yeah. or whole banana. All right. So I'll say you you magically fly back over to the gang. <laughs> and uh, yeah, show them show them what you got. Yeah, he'll put a pitter down and he'll de-invisibility himself. And he all his feathers are burnt. It's like, so <laughs> he pulls out the chest. I got the chest. Um, pulls out a banana. I'm gonna be needing that. Mm -hmm. And then he pulls out the pouch. He's like, "God, there's a, there's a ticket in there." As he starts Wait. peeling the banana, <laughs> needing the banana. You got the He's ticket. nodding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but it's magical. I mean, I'm not gonna open it. You need me to identify. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can dispel, but I don't know what it is. I can dispel as well, but if you give me some time, I can see if I can find out more about it. Oh, you should have seen it. I left all the banana peels all around him, too. Mm. And I gave him a banana. That's compensation right there. Mm. 
Dude, so it's not that. Your feathers look it's not that. fucked up, dude. Yeah, a fireplace will do that to an owl. Fair enough, dude. Ah. Weirdly, wow. they didn't put a grate on the chimney. Like, they never thought somebody... Oh, I'm still I'm still tiny size, too. <laughs> yeah, talk in a higher pitched yeah. voice. And know what that about putting up... Excuse me. Know what that about putting a grate on top of the chimney. And who knows what creatures would fly into your comfy nest, you know? I see. But yeah, there's a chest with some gold in it. And then there's that. Um, I don't know where Dorfer. I don't know where Dorfer Dill is. Uh, so, Bedrick's holding the pouch, and he can't even focus on seeing if there's like a trap on it. He's so like <laughs> enamored by the, the just fuck up of the plan. <laughs> He's like, doesn't seem magical. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, that, uh, Dwarfadil is. I don't know. But I did Aya? not. And he turns to Aya. Aya. Yeah. Uh, is, do you want me to focus on this? I think you should deal with our friend who is Can currently I get a heal? in danger. Yes, oh. and someone help him. I want my and feathers is... back. I will oh, try is... to help you, friend Dragul. Thank you. Uh, Dragul will... will... So sorry, Aya, you go ahead. No, 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 you go... no, no, you go ahead. Now, Aya's thing is she's going to have to jump to Dwarfadil's perspective in a second here, so what is Dragul doing? Uh, Dragul is going to throw down a, a, a level two heal wounds on him. So... That's oh, that, not, that's... That, that is not the right dice. Oh, no, that wouldn't net me back all the way up. Yep, that is not right. Um... Uh, Let's do it right. Such a cheese. So, se gotta hate that spell. <laughs> se seven <laughs> HP. I I will take that. I go from twenty three to uh, sixteen. As he's still eating bananas. Uh, Jake's gonna walk up to Ul. And he's gonna say, you know, they say an apple a day keeps the doctor away and hand him one of the apples he previously bought. Who's a doctor? I don't know, dude. I didn't meet him this time around, you know, but I mean, Kramstadt's a big town, so gotta be somebody, bro. More like a, uh, more like He'll a take the apple and start picking at it. Do we still need to do the vandalism? Well, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> I don't think that uh, that we, we can stop it at this point. You want me to summon the monkey? No, oh, I don't I want you to summon the monkey. I mean, <laughs> and Tootsie, Tootsie starts clapping and jumping because she loves the monkey. What if we like go over by that bench over there on the in like right on dead rights on the ground, dude, in this paint, like we're supposed to? I mean, like it's not the gate, but it's part of the property, I'm right? Do it here, we could do it on the road. What are they gonna do? Wash it off the road? Did you see any guards on the approach to the villa? Uh, did I? Uh, I, I, you definitely flew around the villa, and, uh, yeah, you saw a guard or two. Yeah, dude, there's a few. Not, like, not like, it's not like when we were packing the big three-headed thing with all the people and the cultists, but it's like, uh, like, uh, smaller than our group, maybe. Well, we gotta hope that Dwarf and Dill can get out of this in one piece. Big of which, Aya, how is that going? Um... As Aya's gonna be deaf and blind, and is just kind of before concentrating on 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 the ticket thing, we'll get to that in a second. Is going to uh, what do? You're uh, if you can hear me. Um, yeah, Ool man. is back. Ool is back, and he has arisen some of the guards. Um, he stole the ticket from Void. Wait, can I hear you? 
telepathic is this telepathic conversation or like yes this is a telepathic conversation okay oh man that's good to hear i just got some loose ends to wrap up here man um how much longer because it appears you might be in some pain no yeah, i'll be fine man just give me like three minutes and just make sure you get those that i did right signs painted I, as, I would... as, as a, as, so this was all mental. As Aya, who is who is blind and deaf, is just going to shout to the group here. I need someone to squeeze my hand twice. If there is something else that I'm supposed to tell this, supposed to tell Dwarf Dill. Wait, do we squeeze our hand if there is something? Yes. Uh, as, 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 like, I can't, re I can't respond because I can't hear. As I'm just mm -hmm. gonna hold my hands up. If there's something else I needed to tell Dwarfdill, <laughs> please squeeze my hand twice. I don't think so. Is, is there <laughs> anything else? I think we're good. I don't know why I'm imagining that, like, me and Dragul are still putting out, like, the embers on, uh, <laughs> on Wool's wings. As, as, I, I haven't felt a, a hand squeeze, so, just make haste, Wolfadil, I will be back to, um, if in case anything else comes up, fly safe, do well, good job. As, uh, I was just gonna pull up. Can I focus on trying to figure out this ticket thing now? That's all yes. Fine. Yes, go ahead. Should okay. I uh, do the vandalism? Yeah, can we burn down the the line things? We did promise that we were going to paint on the gate. So if one of you two or both of you seem like you are willing and capable, I don't see um, why not. Who, who has the paint? Uh, here. And he's gonna hand uh, him the paint because I believe he gave it to me. All right, Tootsie. Keep an eye out. And uh, Dragul and Tootsie are gonna start sneaking. So who is that guy? Down the path. Well, that's and, Dragul. Uh... <laughs> you met him a couple of times. <laughs> at this point. Oh wait, um, Dragul. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Come here, sorry. Bro. And he, uh, he's going to reach out, and I'm going to cast a spell. Uh, this might help you in your endeavors to, uh, well, to stay quiet. Uh, and I'm going to use enhanced abilities on him, uh, and I'm going to give him Cat's Grace. Ooh, nice. Uh, advantage on dex checks. Also, if you fall 20 feet, you don't get hurt. All right. All right, Dragul will start sneaking down the road. He's going to not take the path. He's going to, like, because his climbing speed is the same as his walking speed. He's going to be through here. He's going to be climbing the rocks. Very Tootsie stealthy. will be flying behind him. You know, touching down every once where. And then, uh, basically his goal is to try to get to the front door. Um, I don't know if you want to go back to Dwarf Adil, but we'll say he gets to about here. What do you think about that, DM? Yeah, it works for me. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Dwarf Adil. Uh... All right, Dwarfadil, as you're here and you're kind of like hiding in these, uh, hiding in, in between these barrels, you hear the door up in the north side, boom, open up. Uh, and you sort of peek around and you can see that there's more barrels of uh, wine in there. And the guy comes out and he's like, hey, Phil, you coming back to play cards or what? And he's like, this guy goes, I mean, 
I was chasing a mouse. I was working. Uh, you seen Sharon anywhere? She was supposed to be in here sweeping, but I, I don't see anything. So you sort of hear them shooting the shit and uh, sort of like asking where Sharon is. Um, but uh, yeah, you're you're hiding. All right, so uh, Dwarfadil's gonna wild shape again into an owl. He's gonna hop up here, pick up Sharon in his mouth, <laughs> and then proceed to try to just fly out with the, the with the mouse in his mouth. <laughs> if he can. I, okay. As you pass by this guy, we're gonna say that with his pike, he does get an opportunity attack. Oh. Actually, I think owls specifically have a thing where they can't do that. Actually, I don't know. I think it's if they attack. Oh, let me double check. Because they have fly-by. He's, like, he's like, there he oh, is, yeah, a fucking owl. Yeah, fly an owl nope. does not provoke attacks of opportunity when it flies out of an enemy's reach. That's so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, you've got Sharon in your mouth, and you fly oh up the stairs and out of here. Uh, All you right. Do, you do remember, uh, you know, I will say there was more barrels of wine in here, but you're out right now. All right, well, Torfidil has to get rid of, of the evidence. <laughs> Are you going to drop her in the ocean? I'm going to drop her in the ocean. <laughs> so Please know. Going to fly was out. Not, it was not Ul who killed somebody. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the mouse is like waking up as it's being let go out of your talons. And you just hear a squee. <laughs> Bloosh. And Yo, then. Uh, all damage. I guess, I guess it's just Sharon now in the, uh, <laughs> Boy, I gotta get her token, man. Sharon's in the, uh, you know, she's in the water. Dorfidel's going to fly out pretty far. All right. Is there any attempts to save Sharon? None of us can see it. <laughs> we can't do anything about it. She's dead. Sharon drowns. <laughs> she got dropped like Sharon. Damn, half it, a mile out in the ocean in the middle the of the guard night. leans back. <sighs> it has a big yawn. Oh my god! <laughs> These guards are like, "What the hell? Where's Sharon?" But yeah, that's Sharon. Uh... Oh that's, Jesus! That's that, dude. <laughs> Dwarf Odil's just like incapacitated that person as he's flying away. <laughs> Sharks are like attacking Sharon. <laughs> doesn't turn back, doesn't look. <laughs> oh, we we knew you well, you Sharon. Witnesses. I'm waiting for the moment that like we go in the next stream state. Dude, we and just fucking Holloway. Somebody fucking <laughs> oh, like oh, stabs Dwarf Adil. And we find out it's like a one-armed Sharon who's become like a he's out for vengeance. Oh my god. Dwarf Adil, as you are I'll say this. As you are uh boot to boot, as you're out there, uh you see a little something. Okay. And I as you turn back, um you see an entrance right here. Oh. Just in case you uh, were interested. Smiles and nods before sinking in the water. <laughs> well, should I go back, guys? <laughs> That's up to Dwarfendale. Does he say that mentally? Yeah, yeah, he'll say that. He'll ask mentally. He's got his comms, comms on. Um, what what do you mean you what do you mean go back? What do you there's, mean go back? There's another door here, man. What 
to do, to do what? I don't know, man. I just put all my shit, all the shit in a bunch of giant vats of wine, but there might be like more wine. And I got a little bit of shit left, man. <laughs> and I can't let this whole Sharon thing go to waste. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, there's no more witnesses, man. What do you mean there's no more? There was a witness? <laughs> well, you can't worry about the man. There's, uh, none, there's none of them left, man. None, how many did you... What? What? Yeah, we got to Dragul strangling a guard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go back to Dragul. Dragul, you're, you're over here. Let's uh, just stop screwing up. Crawling on the wall. What are you, what are you up to? All right, you see a guard over here right on the front gate, and you see a guard over here uh, doing his best to watch over this uh, this villa in the uh, the winery below. Or sorry, the, the, the vines below. Uh, not on this one. This one's just a, a gazebo. Okay. It's basically open. You can just kind of see through it. I suppose then he'll sneak into and through the gazebo for cover. All right. To see on his heels. All right. You're certainly uh, you're certainly in the gazebo. And you know what? I'll have you move to right over here because this means you would be inside of this gazebo. Okay. Um. So, sorry, the map's so big. All right, let me. I know, my bad. It's okay. It's fine. It's great. I'm glad that it's a large, sneaky mission map. That's really fun. Okay. The problem with this is, is that he's sneaking. T he's leaving the gazebo and sneaking towards the front door of the mansion he here is his ultimate goal uh shift click it for me so i can see the ultimate goal well i don't think he can shift the oh yeah. Yeah. okay where is the ultimate goal then where are you trying to get well, to? the left Everybody side big click. map <laughs> yep okay i see i see i see all right That's you're it. trying to sneak up there front door of the mansion yeah all right He's just trying to get there. I don't know if there's anything super clever he can do. Um, can you cast Pass Without Trace? No, because that spell is the fucking stupid bonkers Busted. good, and I don't. I refuse to use it. Bleeder has it on permanently. <laughs> no, well, that's why nobody's seen him in years. Exactly. In fact, he could be here with us now. <laughs> he swims out into the water. That's what I'm going to do as the big retcon. If Bleeder comes back, the whole concept is Bleeder was around the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody okay. talked to him, so he didn't say anything. I'll tell you what what he's gonna do what what are, these plants are bioluminescent right they are uh from the gazebo uh this plant here is going to start to brightly change colors Ooh. from okay from whatever blue to a deep red and it's gonna to a green it's just gonna start changing colors 
uh, randomly and quickly. Okay. As a minor wonder has been manifested. All right. And it's going to be pretty bright. All right. As you do that, these doors open up. And this guy walks out there, and he's like, what is going on with this plant? Which doors? Uh, sorry. Uh, these doors right here? Huh? What was that noise? And those doors uh, are left open. And uh, I assume it's this plant right here that is is glowing brightly, right? Uh. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll make it. I think it was this plant over oh, here. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Fair enough. Well, this this guy's looking at it. He's like, "This these don't do that." And this guy turns around, and uh, you know, he also walks over to take a look at it. And they're essentially scratching their head. Yep. Hmm. Tragul will use the distraction to sneak out of the gazebo and up closer to the front doors. All right. Uh, you are, let's see. So I guess, okay. So you see the doors right ahead of you are uh, basically on a level below the, the, the main front doors. But these stairs right here will take you up there if you want to take that. Which stairs? These ones right here. Okay, yeah. Leader will climb up and start climbing the stairs. All right. As quietly as he can. It would be All descending, right. right? Now you'd be ascending. Okay. It's actually a level level below. You'll see it in a second. The map's way too big. I apologize. It's fine. Yeah. All right. So. Nice. Is it this one out here on the right? It is. Yeah. So you climb these stairs. And, uh. And yeah. Am I here? It takes you. I'm about to pull you right over to where you should be. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. You climb up those those stairs. And uh, you and Tootsie, with absolutely no problem at all, are looking right at some extremely ornate main door of this building. All right. Trigal goes. He, he pulls the, the paintbrush out in the paint. And he looks at Tootsie and he's like, what? What were we supposed to write? Uh, I don't know, boss. It's all about dead people. <laughs> um. Okay. I think I have it. Um. Maybe this is clever. Maybe this isn't clever. But. This whole thing is kind of dumb anyways, don't you think? <laughs> and Tootsie comes up and is like, it's, it's for the cause, boss. Um, okay. What, what? <laughs> Drago has no idea what why he's writing on this wall, except for that his friend wanted him to do it. So he's going right. to pull out the paint. What color was the paint? Any color you want, actually. You have oh. all of them. It was all of them. So yeah, he pulls out like a crimson bloody red. And as large as he can across the doors, he's going to write, you will be dead people. <laughs> oh, very threatening. Very dead, threatening. Dead people are good yeah. people. All right, roll 2d6. Dead people are good people is good. Dead people, people are good people. Bradshaw. Because that could be a Bradshaw. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that could be interpreted a lot of different ways. <laughs> All right. You said uh, roll what? Roll Damn. 2d6, please. Ooh, how do I interpret that? I would say uh, that's, that's, a, that's mediocre. Mixed. Yeah, so that's, that's certainly mixed. Uh, hang on. All right. Ah, uh, okay. It's a it's a decent job. 
And uh, as you're rolling, you're rolling, as you're painting, uh, Tootsie's looking over your work and, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, Tootsie goes to help, of course. Uh, and just as you're putting the finishing touches, Tootsie does a big underline uh, under the whole thing. And like with her does, tongue. Like with <laughs> her, her tongue. <laughs> she does an underline. And uh, that opens up the doors, revealing an extremely beautiful, ornate uh, landing. Um, but that's it. That's all that happens. There's nobody in there. Why, why did that happen? Uh, uh, well, boss. She accidentally hit the handlebar with the handle with her tongue, you know. Should we go in? Um, Tootsie looks at, looks at him, looks in, looks back. I don't know. Yes. And she starts moving into the building. All right. Tootsie's in here. It's very nice and warm. Um, everything looks very fancy very expensive of course she sees some stairs that go up and some stairs that go down and there's a nice uh, mosaic of the sun rising in the floor perhaps we can find more information well Dragoon and I guess... knows we already have the ticket yeah yeah he does he looks forward, he looks back. Yes, look, let's just get out of here. Whatever you say, boss. Always turn your back on wondrous treasures. Ah. And he's going to st stalk out of the building. He's going to close the doors. <laughs> I was going to say, does Dragoon need to make a wisdom check? <laughs> See if that goading. Uh... <laughs> he's gonna close the doors, and he's gonna attempt to to sneak back, kind of, um, not quite the way he came, because that light ought to be out at this point, or stop blinking, or whatever. But maybe he can make a more oh, that's kind true, of because it does work for a minute. Yeah. Maybe he can make try to make a more secure circuitous route. Um out through there. Oh no. I think he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna go west. Alright. No. Alright. We'll go back to uh let's see, is, uh who's who is next? Is there anybody still here? It's uh it. it's uh Ooh. Uh, not Ool. Uh, Dorfadil, oh, right? Dorfadil, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dorfadil. Yeah. Forgot, of course. Uh, Dorfadil's going to meet up with the rest of the party. All right. Horus has been outside the gates the whole time with the rhino. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and when you guys come up, you see him very quickly pulling his pants back up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Was he... What were you doing? Oh, hey guys. With that right. what? what? Oh no, I was just going to the bathroom. Did you get the ticket? Yes, with the. Uh... Yeah, we got it. Because uh, this is all. Are we all together now? Yeah, yeah I mean, Dorfino's would... still at Owl, but. Yeah. yeah, I'll say you all made it out alive. Uh, totally, totally fine. Uh, uh, Tootsie and. Tootsie and uh, Dragool are crawling back stealthily over to you guys, but uh, judging yeah. by the, the 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 route that Dragool and Tootsie take, I, I don't see uh, an issue, uh, you know, a reason why they would attract attention as long as they're trying the, to be stealthy. The vandalism is complete. See, we stole, we vandalized, we didn't kill anyone. No, I mean, not a single one. Yeah, I mean, we did really, we did really, I, I really wish I would grow back to my normal size. Um, did, did, did it ha hold on. Did he roll did, for the hours? I did not roll for the hours. Uh, what was it, like 1d4 or something, hours? Yeah. 
What happens One if it lasts longer? You see the no. doctor that I, we talked about about the apple about. Again, you keep <laughs> bringing up this guy called a doctor, and I have not met somebody named Doctor. Make a virgin. No, dude, his name is the doctor, bro. I hear you he can travel what? time and stuff. What? Oh, What's that might time? be helpful. That might be helpful for you. Yeah, that's something I heard about in something people said in um in Talonbrine, but you know, I'm still not sure they're just like pulling my leg or some shit, dude. Chagul oh. will pick up tiny ool bodily. You put, put me down, sir. Well, shit, and he now will we... put him on. He will put him on top of Tootsie's back. So now we can like go get drunk at Voids, dude. Right? This is acceptable. Well, I hang on. We... I have a request. All right. I did my job flawlessly. Let me yeah. burn down this hedge of vines. Just I just, just want to burn just, something. Yeah, just let me just, you know, a little bonfire and you know bing bing bosh. We're good. The let demons it, tell me to burn it, things. It ways away. T Tootsie takes off. I didn't even summon off his back. <laughs> I didn't even summon my friends. All right. Tootsie takes off with Ool on his back and flies to the wall of vines and freezes it solid with a blast of frost breath. Ooh. Oh, we're over by the vines now. Cool. Dwarfadil, did you sabotage enough of it that uh, he would be happy? He's got like six vats, man. The aisle looks scarred mentally. Yeah, that should be good enough. Uh... Can I roll for the Arcana now? For, for like the magical item? Well, we just froze a hedge of vines and yeah. I started a fire on another one. Yeah, we're moving. Okay. This okay. All right, the gang's moving. I yes. imagine I imagine I has been working on that while the whole sneak yeah. mission was going I, uh, down. Roll, right? roll yeah. in Arcana with advantage. Okay. Because, um,. Well, specifically, I ha I was going to say that I enhanced ability for intelligence, and then I borrowed knowledge for Arcana. And then I did detect, or, like, detect magic, is what I was going, that was the order of operations I was going to do. Okay, so, uh, go I ahead help and... you, because detect magic, I think, is a concentrate, isn't it? No. Well, it was just... Specifically a ritual. Yeah, but it doesn't make it not concentrate. Is it a concentrate? It is a concentrate. Yeah. So there's no reason to enhance ability, is what I'm saying. Okay. Well, regardless, I have the uh, I have Arcana currently, which is what I need. Okay. And so I guess you okay. have a bonus to Arcana because of this right now. Yes. Um, but... And so go ahead and roll it with the bonus with advantage, since you've been really taking your time on this. Twenty-two. Okay, you sense that there is an, uh, there are two glyphs on the interior of this uh, wallet. And one of them is an alarm, a glyph of alarm. Mm -hmm. And the other is a glyph of teleportation. Oh, um, mm -hmm. there's two glyphs inside of this wallet. An alarm and teleportation. Ah. Well, and you're here. I can dispel magic. As can I. Right. I can too. We could all do it at the same time. Well, Ool, if you'll assist me. I'll do one, you do the other. Dorfadil, I'm gonna get far away from these people. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll the same that. too, dude. Let me just back up over here. It's probably good enough. And I'll clean up the mess. All right. Uh, I will. I'll go after the teleportation one. And I'm gonna cast dispel magic at fifth level. Hey, you too. Okay. 
And I guess, uh, okay, so are, are you guys targeting the different glyphs? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you're both casting it at fifth level. Yeah. He's going after the alarm. I'm going after the teleportation. <laughs> oh, God, Nate, excuse me. are you okay? Yeah, geez. <laughs> yes, excuse me. Okay. Roll. Oh, what the hell? All right. Okay, I'm fine. Uh, right. Yes. Roll. Both of you roll 2d6, and we're going to take whichever is higher. With the eight. Well, so. As you uh, cast the spell, uh, both of you feel like you succeeded. But then double check. You will... hey, you give it eye double open. check. Give it an eye to open up. I if you still detecting. I I can. As I'm going to like constantly be checking this thing. Am I feeling <laughs> anything? Okay. You feel like the alarm is still uh, is still there. Okay. As I will expend a Dispel Magic at level 5. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we can see like an <laughs> orange glow in the distance. All right. I wonder how he As liked you're... me covering his bed and room with banana peels and one banana. I, I want you to also roll 2d6, please. Okay. You're hey. holding the you're holding the the wallet and you're, you're 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 sensing the glyph in there, and then you sort of just you feel that magic dissipate. Okay. And then you you feel like whatever was in there is certainly resolved okay i will uh open the wallet all right as you open the wallet you pull out an oracle's ticket oh man Ooh. i got a golden ticket what is this oh feel bad about this whole thing i mean you can't no, really we... tell if it's the sun rising or the orange glow <laughs> flame behind you <laughs> here put it back you want to put it back in my lantern like i mean this he was definitely the nicest of the three moguls we have met well i did give him a bunch of bananas peels and one banana and that's really useful to for regrown crops i think and we didn't kill I anyone. Did. Yes, we did not kill anyone. At least that is that. Yeah, that we know of, dude. Some of you didn't. Did you think no. you were a little bit close to that maid? A little bit. Like, maybe they had, like, some forbidden relationship. Or maybe, like, they're a father and daughter type of deal. I haven't read anything about anything like that. Oh no! I'm saying like maybe he was she was a love child of like a mistress, and he took it on like he couldn't recognize her as like a daughter, so he hired her as a maid type deal. You know? Isn't that the plot of Tusk Love Four? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. He I said, "Isn't actually... that the plot of Tusk Love Four? <laughs> no, it's the plot of Tusk Love Eight. Oh. I don't... oh. Well, it's like, we'll pull out the other Tusk Loves from his lantern. He's like, I do enjoy a bit of the books. Oh, that one looks different. You mind if I see that? No. These are collector editions, first edition. Thank you. You have a library in there. Well, I mean, what else am I going to do when I'm taking a mud bath for eight hours? Well, why do these have pictures in it? Oh, I call them rereads because words 
you know, I, I just words don't work with me. Um, I call them rereads. Pictures work better. Pictures. This looks like a lot of art from a, an artist I knew a long time ago. His, na his name was Manga. <laughs> Who? Manga. He's a. I'll tell you the story another time. Okay. Okay. I have no interest in any such things. Shall we finish our dealings, or should we go straight to the Oracle? I mean... The Oracle is our target. But well, we should go ahead and get that other ticket, dude, from Hawkman. Yeah, get the second ticket, so we get two tickets. I don't know what these tickets are used for, but one is better than two. I mean, two is better than one. Or well. He's getting confused looking at... He's holding up one finger on both hands and getting confused which one's one, which one's two. Let's make haste to Hawkman, then. All right. <clears throat> well, I'll see you guys uh, run on back uh, as stealthy as you can. And uh, anytime you pass somebody on the road, uh, you know, you guys are careful to avert your gaze. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, you whistle nonchalantly. Better. Yeah, whistle nonchalantly. As you're Except walking. for the big rhino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely nothing going on here guys and uh yeah just out so for a midnight stroll you know you walk across the bridge it's actually coming up on on uh early morning right now you see the sun rising uh go ahead and make a uh, perception check actually all of you have pretty high passive perception uh, yeah you go as a 20 <laughs> I have as a 15. You, as a you see the passive? sun rising. Uh, the 20 that, passive is impressive. That northwardly um, cloud is getting really close. Probably just a mile away from the city. Mm. Vendor don't ominous. like that. Mm. Very ominous. To be rain? We should make haste, nonetheless. Yeah, you, you don't know, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, you... Neither here nor there, right? You walk in, uh, and you're at the city gates. And uh, the guard goes, oh, hello. Uh -huh. gives, you a, gives you a little friendly wave and, and pulls open the gate for you. And you all pass through with no problem at all. You know, it's nice to be in the town and there would be no bad blood. Yes, I agree. Hey, Nate. Uh, yeah, so I guess be you're on your way. Oh, go ahead, Rachel. I was going to say, so being a dreamwalker, now that this cl cloud is up close, it's really the first time I'm seeing it, does it look familiar? Go ahead and uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, I just say no. Okay. It's uh, it's ominous and it's uh, it's like seeing a sandstorm from very far away. Okay. But it's gray. Hmm. I think we're just making a, a beeline to the Hawkman so that we can kind of. Skedaddle. Yeah, yeah I bet. I feel. Yeah, dude. Okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe take a rest at some point. I have a feeling I'm about to go talk to the Oracle after Hawkman. But uh, rest your gonna... job's done. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, if you guys want to run on over to Hawkman's, <clears throat> by all means, like you can take the. You can. I say you can get back to his place at about. You know, seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Let's pull you over to there. Oh, God. And yeah, you knock on the door. Knock on the door. Old Arthur pulls it open, and he's like, "Uh, it's you, vagabonds again." 
Like, oh, it's it's rather insulting. I'll uh, tell my master that you're that you're here. Yeah, he's Open the sense. door. <laughs> and uh, he says, "Follow me." And he, you know, he pulls you all in, and and yeah, he goes over and uh, he's like, <clears throat> "Master Hawkman, uh, your associates." And he walks off. The deed is I like that guy doesn't like us. He goes, well, were you able to pull one on over on Voight? Yep, we were. Well, tell me about it. What'd y'all do? Sabotage the wine. Put a bunch of banana peels around him while he slept. And one in his, his hand. front door. Oh, what a prank. Fort- I peed on his front doorstep. Oh, we burned down the vineyard. Nice, supervised, dude. Man, this you, you burned down his vineyard and painted on his door. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you're forgetting about the banana peels. I feel like I. <laughs> you guys went a little overboard, right? Like this was a. Uh, I mean, Frederick's <laughs> just a. <laughs> We tore off his head. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, sabotaging his wine. I mean, that's one thing, but uh, but you, you burned it down. And uh, <laughs> do you guys. About the missing maid, who they're probably going to blame for this shit. Do you guys not see how this is, uh, you know, a, a little more than I asked? No, it's just cool. gonna say it was all in the spirit, Bradshaw dude. was here. Yeah, we You said to... Bradshaw did this? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh god. Oh, and he's just pacing around like rubbing his head. How could you be so stupid? How could you be so stupid? And he's just beside himself, walking around his room. He's like really, really upset. Don't Vendrick's worry. Gonna... We immediately came to this place after we did all <laughs> no, these things. We're here. Did anyone see you come into the city? Oh, well, yeah. I was riding a rhinoceros. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. What, what am I going to do? Dorfidel to... slams the door open. Hey, man. I got some more bad news, man. <laughs> more? Toilet's clogged, man. <laughs> oh. That's oh. really good, You were going to say dudes. the lady was dead. Sharon. <laughs> Sharon. I... Oh, not Sharon. Uh, Felicity, <laughs> I, I, I know you're not as good as a cleaner like your sister Sharon, but please. Please go. Fix <laughs> <laughs> that. Oh, we've got some bad news about you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It, it, at least tell me oh, that you Jesus. were able to sabotage all of his wine. I mean, yeah, his vineyard burned down and his wildness are gone. <laughs> I feel like you're really missing out on the banana peels around him while he slept. I, I don't care about the banana peel. I mean, I. Oh. Vendrick's going to just just walk up to him and get, I would say, uncomfortably close and go, <laughs> as you can tell, time is of the essence. <laughs> Take it now. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I've been had. You know, uh Well, I mean that's what you get for being rude to us. We make sure we do the job to the letter. You we are a me? bunch of vagabonds, as your major domo would say. <laughs> we have a part of the God. deal, dude. Wait, who? Oh. We held up part of the deal. Oh man, but you implicated me in this. I'm gonna get no, caught. No, look, dude, Bradshaw. look, dude. We won't even ask oh. you buy. We won't even ask you buy Voits that, that or sell that land of Voit at this point. We just need the ticket, dude. Who's Bradshaw? Uh, that little kid. <laughs> oh, that little girl. Yeah, we told we and we went over to the Bradshaw's house. And everybody saw my rhino leave Bradshaw's house, so I think Vendrick, they'll believe that Bradshaw did it. At, but we came being... immediately here, though. Yeah. Oh, well, God. Would you him like us to burn shrewd... something? We could burn your house down so that hold it on, looks like... Him, 
him being a shrewd businessman, Vendrick is going to definitely be a bit intimidating, but he is going to pass the sort of body language message of give us the ticket because it's the only thing that will make us leave and there won't be a problem. Like, okay, basically, roll intimidation. I, I, I am trying to keep these guys from burning your house down. Give me the fucking ticket. <laughs> right, can, okay. Can I... He he goes, it, you said you don't need me to sell the land again? Nah. Did, didn't you say that that was how you were going to get the ticket from Voight? Oh, uh, yeah, don't worry about yeah, it, dude. We don't need two do tickets. Do I have advantage on this? You uh, do have advantage on this intimidation. He's in a right. bad state. A 12. Well. Okay. He looks at you and he's, uh, uh, he like wipes the sweat from his head and he's like, fine. And he pulls the ticket out and he gives it to you and he goes, right. leave and never come back. Oh, that's two tickets. Venric doesn't even say anything. <laughs> he just turns around and leaves. Yeah, Jake will just Bye. follow. He goes, Thanks, I hope you all know. Okay. Wait, Please what leave. We, what does he want us to know? You're yeah. walking away. It's go It's over. I imagine... You know what? No, Vendrick shoots him a glance like, you better not fucking say anything because these guys are a hair trigger. <laughs> <laughs> he uh he he zips it. He zips his mouth shut. I'm gonna I'm I, gonna just sort of casually knock these papers off the desk as I leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, as Ola walks, as Ola walks I, out, he's gonna shoot him the finger guns. Yeah, fucking Tootsie pees on his clock on the way out. That's <laughs> your <laughs> <Two> savages. <laughs> yeah. okay. I, now hold on, hold on. This works in in his favor though. In some degree, because at least then he can't be implicated. He's like, nah, these guys roughhoused me too. Oh, oh yeah. It's my clock if they threatened me. Let's let's Samurai, Samurai, I, Samurai I, Jake's let's gonna carefully make let's sure that the door is properly on latched door. on the way out. Let's write dead people on his door too. Yeah, once, yeah. Once the door has the latched, paint. Uh Dorfidel's gonna leave a little door hanger that talks about undead rights. <laughs> okay. And walk away. And we Brad. pick Undead Rights Bradshaw on the front. <laughs> you, you, have, you have those in your pocket. Yeah, so, man. I got like. Why, why am I painting? Because it sends a message, <laughs> man. Yeah, as, as, as a, Ool eats a banana and drops the banana peel on the front porch. As I'm gonna like run up like to y'all, because I never went in. Were you able to get the, the ticket? We got it. Now let's get to the Oracle. Now. Do we, do we, we can ask two questions. Is it not written right. on the ticket, dudes? As you guys are... I what did you say? Before Um no, no, I was asking if you got if you got the ticket. I never went in. I was keeping watch. Oh yes. Yeah, we got the we ticket and nothing it. else happened. Oh good. <laughs> I'm glad. I don't want another repeat of what Dwarfadil had me watch. I'm gonna look at Dwarfadil questioningly. <laughs> I'm gonna look at I like. Dragul's gonna oh, look at gonna Ool. Me. Wait, what? Then, Wait. then <laughs> shift his I, gaze I, to Ool. Wait, voice, what? As as I is gonna like look at Dwarfadil and just be like poisoning <laughs> poisoning those those um those barrels were was quite grotesque. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, as, like, like Aya genuinely looks spooked by the fact you just, like, you actually, like, picked up the, the mouse and, like, dropped it off. I don't <laughs> want that. <laughs> as you guys are walking out, <clears throat> I need you, <clears throat> excuse me, as you guys are walking out, uh, Hawkman leans over to his servant. And he goes, Arthur, I need you to call the police. <laughs> that's that's, that's just going to be the end of that scene. 
Uh, unbeknownst to you, uh, Aya, you're a dreamwalker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you guys are walking back towards the main part of the city, uh, you have a vision. <laughs> oh? In that vision, you see <clears throat> a underground room and that underground room has a uh, uh, a circle in flame on the ground and I'm going to show it to you okay An occultist <clears throat> walks through the door and approaches, walks down some steps and he approaches this circle. Uh, it is an exceptional summoning circle. And he takes a vial, it looks like blood, and he's holding the ram's horn and he pours a little bit of blood and he, he performs a, a ritual as he <clears throat> places it on the a piece of the horn in the middle of the circle, it sort of blasts open and creates a portal. And a creature's claws come up out of the portal and grab the outside of the, the stonework and pulls itself up and out. And you see a demon come up out of the ground and it says it's good to be back and then uh, well you wouldn't recognize this demon but that's the end of the scene that's the end of the vision and that's all you get um, as, as I Aya is going to like have, will have froze and like I imagine like her eyes like fogged up while that happened and as everybody just kind of like walks forward She's gonna come out of it and start kind of like panicking because like she's lost where she is for a second. Um, 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 the 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 goats the goat's head the um the Bradshaw summoned a demon. Got our problem. I look no. at Ghoul. No. Yeah, like um, Ghoul summons lots of demons, dude. What's what's the problem? Yeah. No, like, it's it, not it, our no. problem. No, it was an impeccable it, it summoning circle, and it crawled out from the ground. Yeah, and, um, and when I summon greater demon, it summons the summon circle too. You want to see? No, no, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to see any more demons. It said that it. it, it it's good to be back. It's what it said. I don't know what that means. Uh, he's probably but, just one of the boys, dudes. Yeah, he doesn't want a brewski. No, I don't know I, what brewski I, is. I don't, I don't think so, because it came from the goat horn thing that yeah. we gave him. Yeah. And it said that it was good to be back. You I, know what helps you... calm your nerves is a seven o'clock beer. No. I could do I that. Don't, yeah. I don't want. To, no. Yeah. No. Man. Maybe no. we should just like. No. Speed run it to the fucking Oracle dudes, ask her questions, well, we and uh, let, the way. let the town with their magical yeah. stuff handle the demon, dudes. Yeah, yeah, it's not our fault. We let gotta save the our dudes. Yeah, well, why do we care about this shithole? Okay, but what if Miard is impeded by this demon? It said it was back. But we need to find out at, in the dream. We need to find out at the Oracle then in the first place. Yeah, we have two questions we can ask if we need to. <laughs> And the second one is probably about scared. time travel. <laughs> I, I, I still don't know what you're talking about. Let's head to the Oracle. Who we don't cares have time about a to demon deal with summons? Demons. No, we don't have time to deal with demons. And worst early, case, best case scenario, we demon. don't do anything with it. It just goes early. rampage. Yeah, surely the demon will not interrupt us while we're trying to find Mayard. From the Oracle. Yeah. Well, you have you have you encountered demons in the dreamscape before? Yeah. I oh, sent yeah. like four of them. You literally in our own group. No. But also, <laughs> the dreamscape is home to many things. 
both yeah. or originating from it and outside of it. I mean, yeah, now, I I'm his... going to say we found devils before, and devils yeah. get mad if you call them demons, but I can't tell the difference because they all look the same. They do all well, look the same, man. bro. They, they, are... they, do. Whoa, they sound the same too, okay. bro. Well, you guys all look the same to me. I mean, that's fair. That's fair, dude. Oh, that's man. fair, dude. Oh. Look at me and Horace. We're both beautiful men. Strong. Powerful. Blonde. Who? Horace. Me. Oh, yeah. Hi. So, let's make... He is an L. To the Are Oracle. Yes, the Oracle. To the Oracle. Well, <laughs> you guys know where to go. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Is there like an address on the there, ticket, though. bros? <laughs> oh, it's right yeah. here on the back of the ticket. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh man. We'll take Good. we'll take the bus. We'll take the bus. We'll Uber there. Next week on Dragon Balls PP. Next week. Sweet. And on that note, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more putrid pranks from the Adventurer's Landing.